Chapter 19 in my Christian life, my active Christian life. Eckerd Drug Company, major drug company back in the old days, 2,800 stores purchased by CVS Pharmacy. They just never bothered to upgrade. CVS Pharmacy was more advanced in their operations. They just took it over. But while they were doing that, ending their existence, I was a clerk. I hired myself on as a, a clerk, a temporary clerk. Donna was a good trainer. Font sizes were microscopic, so I could hardly read anything in my training or on the screen. But I managed through repetition in Donna's patience. I was on my own in corporate America's basement. That's where I was located, in the basement of this big headquarters building in St. Petersburg, Florida. It was me and 14 women in cash and sales. Lucy said to my right, sat to my right, ready to pounce on any attempts to be sociable. She reminded me of a Rottweiler. We sat in a cramped carol setup. My right elbow blocked Lucy's desk drawer. Deodorant was a good thing. Kathy sat behind me, critiquing my every move. And Anita and Jill were just over the hill on the other side of my partition wall, waiting in the bushes to pounce on me as the mood struck them. It's a hostile environment. There was the distinct smell of territorial war in the air. The only friend in the place was to my left, the aisle on my left. Trap number one. Don't hit enter till you get to the bottom of the screen. When it came time to print out the ex exception report, if you hit enter instead of tab before you got to the bottom of the screen, you printed out 50,000 pages and shut down the mainframe. Wow. I'm a new guy in the block, and they tell me to do this, and it's all random stuff. You have to memorize this. Why they didn't fix this problem is a mystery. There were so many things to remember. It was inevitable. I was one millisecond too late one day. Anita sent me to the main frame room on the second floor, and they did damage control. Forty minutes downtime. I devised the habit of taking my right hand off the keyboard when that critical screen came up. So if you don't, if you hit enter at the wrong time, the whole 50,000 pages are going to be printed out. Why? We don't need to change the files. That's what the coordinator and chief advisory Jill said. But I had 48 inches of filing to do every week starting on Wednesday. They laid off the two women that did the job when Gisela saw that I was doing my job so well. 15 yards for piling on. Oh, he's the temp. No problem. Piling all the work on the temp. When, you, when they show skill, everybody that's not a temp is permanent gives the temp the work. So here I am, home alone. If you wanted to find the word chaos, go into those files. Not a single tab was readily visible. Labels were illegible, scroll in fine point. The drawers were jammed to the hilt. Everyone complained, especially from other departments. They couldn't find anything. When they did, it was too late. Filing always dragged behind the time the information was needed. And along comes Temp Man with a super case, a super uh, cape, right? Says Filing Man. I borrowed from here and there, mainly idle equipment from departments that were moved to Utah. I gathered and supplied Pendiflex file folders, label holders, and file cabinets. I keyed in labels on my PC and began at the beginning. Jill said resistance was futile. I was wasting my time. And she warned me that I better not be doing this at the expense of something else. I was used to getting no help and attacked from the Borg. You know, remember Star Trek or whatever? I utilized the magic of downtime to do my own, my new filing system instead of dragging things out. Now, this is the headquarters of Eckerd Drugs. Uh, unbelievable, 2,800 drugstores. And this is their filing system. And I was revamping it as a temp. One drawer at a time, staggering the labels on Pendaflex folders. They didn't even have staggered labels, so you, when you look at a file, all the files were directly in the line. You couldn't read them. But if you staggered them, you could read them all without looking, uh, without moving things. So, one draw at a time, staggering the labels on Pendaflex folders. I don't think they knew about Pendaflex. I did. Papers in the folders stood straight up and neat. You could see labels for miles. I got instant positive feedback. All our walkers would go, well, I can't believe this. We can now find things. Things got lost so quickly. Thousands and thousands of files at the headquarters. This is an accounting department of the entire network of 2,800 drugstores. Rumors spread that there was someone who could get something done around here. This was passed on to Scott, my new manager, who was just hired to relieve Gisela from her overload. He was my buddy at first. 
He directed me to recommend new files to replace the beat up, mismatched ones we were using. They arrived, five brand new, five drawer Laro files in matching tan color from, from the beginning. Maintenance threatened to become my instant enemy unless I set them up myself and moved out the old ones to who knows where. Nobody wants to help me, so I, I had become part of maintenance as well. They were miffed at having to unload these monsters and bring them to sales and cash. Remember, I'm Bob the Temp, new guy in the block. What do I know? They were heavy and bulky. They left me alone to the task. I did my usual foraging and came up with a hand truck and some tools. At last, Ron in maintenance was willing to loan me some tools to do his work for him. As long as I did the work, it would give me the tools. A brilliant idea came to me, too. Use the best of the files, of the old files, to help other people out. Especially Lucy, who hated every breath I took. Her coupon files were a mess, and Gisela asked me if I could do something about them. When I did, she was flabbergasted because she had been so mean-spirited to me from day one. She backed off the mean stuff and gave me a ride to Tampa. All the files transformed into something beautiful. Ecstasy was once more restored to Eckerd. I made some instant friends in other departments. I saved them a lot of time researching by simply making files available promptly. I also triggered some adversaries into active pursuit. You wonder what makes people so mean-spirited and bitter. And that was my boss, by the way. He became my friend until he realized how good I was at doing my job, and I got took notice. And now he turned out to un try to undo everything I did. So acting coordinator to revamp the receipts warehouse. Scott produced uh, the, the, the tackle to ta my, uh, oh, proposed. Oh, Scott proposed. Can't read. I, Scott proposed I tackle the receipts warehouse. He offered me the position of acting coordinator. No pay raise. There we go again. Or else the street. Take the job. No extra pay. Do the job. And then we'll fire you. Some, someone permanent had applied for my position, so I was bumped. So it was take his offer or the highway. I was forced to train my replacement first. Then I was told to become popular with everyone that I was to deal with in a, a new position. It was a temporary one, but I, if I performed a miracle in revamping the operation, I would be guaranteed the position full-time as coordinator, so they said, never materialized. The operation was 13 weeks behind when turnaround was supposed to be 72 hours. What that means is, if you're 13 weeks behind sorting and filing the receipts from the 2,800 stores and a customer requests a receipt, they get the money back if you can't find it in 72 hours, which we were 13 weeks behind. We didn't have stuff out there. It was all piled up in bags. The warehouse was a mess. Boxes were stacked, stacked on, on top of one another. Some rows had rows in back you couldn't see. Contents were marked in pencil on a brown box. I thought to myself, how could anyone let this get so bad? But every step, every suggestion I took met with junkyard dog opposition. So I just went ahead with the changes without getting a popular vote. So I did a new cash and sales layout. Boss tried to make a, a better one than mine, so I submitted to the vice president. He liked mine over my bosses. And that made me a permanent object of, of uh, offense, offensive to try to get me fired, which he finally did. So, and then I did the engineering, engineering energy, energy department billing. I did all that. I did the wagon wheel flea market. So, chapter 20, I moved on from Eckerd. You, knew, you can see where that's going. The better I got as a Christian, as an employee, the worse it became. You either be a good Christian and suffer the consequences, and be a good employee and suffer the consequences. Politics, always there. Chapter 21. Now am I 21 or 20? I am 21 now. So I, I ended up back on the road again. MSC specialty, setting up, what do you think? Filing systems. Always oh, something you're, you, have, you have too little of and too much of. Danka, worked for the manufacturer of, of uh, printers, of uh, copiers. I did that entry work. Using all the skill set, by the way, the thing I gained from being a good employee and suffering all this abuse was the skill set. I did the best I could. I could have undermined everything and did the least, and I'd still be there, but I needed a skill set so I could move around because you're going to get fired anyway because I'm a middle-aged white guy, right? 
this is a day and age for everything else but. But I had my successes earlier when I was a young white boy and eager to learn but no skill set, but the prejudices allowed me to get the jobs. Now I have all the skill set and they don't want you around. And when you do, they get rid of you quickly because you're making everybody else look bad. So, thank you. And then Home Shopping Network, ever heard of them? It was a joke there. I did such a great job and I ended up doing creative work and then a guy comes along and undermines me and so I have to leave. Midlandic phone, no phone, no chair, no desk, but I'm supposed to do the work. Then we go over. See, I'm not doing much witnessing because I'm in and out of these places. I did some witnessing at, at uh, Eckerd, but that was with a Baptist guy. I went to his church and he uh, didn't want to have it. I was a part of his Sunday school class. He, he taught, but he found out how much I knew, gone. You know too much? Don't know too much as a Christian, but God wants you to know the whole Word of God. So, keep on going. Income for surveys. I walk in there. With no work for several weeks after Mid-Atlantic, I decided to take this assignment. I got off the bus and walked into a residential area looking for number 2115. It was a small house, not an office building. I was about to turn around except for the sake of needing a job. The house was very nice inside, expensive everywhere, crowded with every inch of furniture and stuff. Walking space was very tight. I was led into a bedroom where I was to work. Wow, a cute little horny male fluffy white dog. I'll tell you why he was horny, but you can figure that out. White helped my leg as I sat down at a tiny, expensive, antique, a regular shaped pedestal table. The antique chair, this is in the bedroom, antique chair barely fit me and wobbled as I sat down. It was very uncomfortable. My left elbow kept hitting the bed. I'm, you know, just for the, fake, for the sake of just getting some money to eat, the PC, oops, off the table and wobbled with every key I hit, and the shrill gawky shrock of the gray parrot every 20 seconds right next to me in the adjacent bedroom kept my heart jumping out of my throat. This guy's weird. But what was most interesting was I was aiding and abetting a criminal conning people on the internet via an illegal mail spam operation. I didn't discover this until they shut him down the next day. So I, I was working for an illegal operation, a scam thing. So I finished the work and left. My left shoe worn out from pushing the dog off my leg and my ear itching from the wax earplugs that kept my ear in my ear to avoid a heart attack from the screeching parrot. That's what you had to put up to get work. The man decided he wouldn't pay me for the work anyway because his operation was shut down, but the temp agency did pay me this time. A lot of times it, paid, it was not my problem. I, you know, well, how come you didn't know it was illegal? Pro view. I had to use my own beach chair the first day. I had to bring my own beach chair. No chair, no desk, no phone was set aside for me to use. All right, temp man for sale or rent, jobs to let, low percent. This is like the Christian life. God leads you, you don't question him, and you get through it. It's not more than I could handle, but I learned a lot about people. I could use a salesman's desk two days a week to answer the phone at this company. It was set right under a picture window, peering into the owner's office. I could see every move he made from the side. There were no curtains. The other three days I had no place to sit. I used a small shipping cabinet with a slide-out shelf, six feet from the wall, mounted phone in the warehouse when it wasn't occupied. Other times I just wandered around looking for a place to plant myself. I finally borrowed one of the side chairs in the front entrance. No one really bothered to provide anything for me to work with. I was situated all by myself all day in the warehouse in solitary confinement. Everyone else had a desk, a chair, and a phone in the office area. I had to answer the phone in the first ring. That was tough, seated in a chair six feet away with the phone on the wall. Greg liked to race me to it from the desk to, hope to keep me on my toes, because if he got it first, then they chastised me. When he beat me, he let me know about it. It didn't help my back any to keep jerking out of the chair to catch the phone before the second ring. And at that time, my back was, was getting worse. Customers were argumentative about telling me who they were. Greg lectured me on not getting me the names and purpose for calling. I noticed that no one else asked who was calling. They just said, Greg, call on line two. I had to give full name and reason for calling. Many callers became incensed because I didn't recognize their voice, even the owner's wife on her first call. I never knew who was, I don't know the owner's wife, or what her voice sounded like. She often insisted I interrupt Tom's phone calls to patch her in on trivial matters. He did not like me doing that. 
This was going to downhill fast. Every time I answered the phone, it created a problem. Once again, I was being set up.